The state of our doctrine is this. It's only information. All we do in doctrine is feed you information from another angle that's already new. I'm preaching good here. I feel like I'm in here by myself, but I'm preaching good. All doctrine does is disseminate information. And what you do is you shout. And don't know how to apply the information. When I was struggling, I went to church and all I heard was, you got to fight, you got to fight, you have the power, tell me how to use it. It made me feel guilty and worthless because I was trying the best I could and everybody tells me I have the power and I can overcome but nobody ever said, take these steps. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on, give it more. Come on. Somebody who, who, who believes God say amen. teachings. You don't need a Bible story. You don't need more information. You have all the information. That's right. My God, I feel like preaching here. Oh, Shanda. I feel like preaching here this morning. I feel like I'm in here by myself and shipping, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. I came to get you to grow up. The reason why things will not change is because you still on milk. You still concerned about what, what, what true righteousness is. I already, you already know what righteousness is. Righteousness means you leave it with God. That's nothing to do with your clothes. Move on! Amen. Yeah. You worry about true holiness. Holiness is not nothing to do with your clothes or your lifestyle. Holiness is a state of being that you come into. When you come into Christ, he makes you holy. Which means that God sets you apart for his use. Move on! Amen. Sunday, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching here by myself. We have to move on from all these doctrines. You've been taught enough. It's the same word, friend, that you use for doctrine and inheritance. But we so busy focus on doctrine because it makes us feel like we're smarter than you. Or we're living better than you. And we are stuck on milk. And we are sick and can't be healed. We are broken and we can't prosper. We are frustrated and can't find peace. But we know who's supposed to baptize us. Jesus. My God, I'm getting in trouble here. We know all that stuff. We know what, what kind of water you're supposed to get baptized in. You know all the church gender. You know all the church churchology. You know all that stuff, but you're stuck. Come on. Now. You're angry and frustrated, and nobody can tell you how to get rid of it. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. You're trying to change. You want to be a better husband. Want to be a better wife. Want to be a better mate. A better spouse. Nobody is telling you how to do it. All we doing is arguing about the Holy Ghost and, and who, who name you can baptize in and who going to heaven and who going to hell. You don't have a clue, so shut up, amen. Oh, glory to God. I already know who's going to heaven. He said, if I repent and believe, I'm, I'll be going to heaven. You don't understand what's going on with that. Stop making the mind of stuff. Come on now. Come on now. Teach. I'm just going to teach this morning. Y'all mind. I want you to come to church for a reason and leave here with something, Joshua. He says, it's time to move on. The preacher tell me what I need to do to move on. Amen. Yeah. He said, if you continue reading, he said, but once you tell people the truth, ain't nothing else you can do. Oh, no. If they choose not to believe it, y'all don't read the Bible. Oh, no. He said, ain't nothing else you can do. Yes, yes. He said, you don't get stuck with them because they refuse to believe. He said, how can you restore them again to repentance if they crucify Christ again? He said, God is not unfaithful, gentlemen, enough to forget that you tried to preach to them. Amen. But don't get stuck with them. No. Yes, no. No. Come on now. That you be not slothful. I'm going to teach this in about five minutes and go home. See, the difference is, he said, I'm going to spread the better things of you. I'm going to thank you to come to salvation. Oh, You're already saved. Stop focusing on that. Yes. You're already holy. Stop. See, let me, I'm going to tell you something that I'm happy with this. When the Holy Ghost really slapped me with this. I have been for months teaching about the doctrine of sin. For months I'm trying to convince you your sins are forgiven. He said, Charles, stop! Amen. If they don't have it by now, they're not going to get it. So it's time to move on to maturity. It's not to teach them how to prosper. It's not to teach them how to overcome. It's not to teach them how to have success. Oh, Lord, yes, There's too much doctrine going on. Amen. Oh, you already know your sins are forgiven. Say amen. amen. Why well, should I understand you? Every Sunday, quoting scripture after scripture, trying to prove to you your sins are forgiven. Oh, if you're in genuine love and you have not received that, 
Yeah, yeah, you in the wrong church. Come on, I'm talking to you. You know what I'm going to say? You know what I'm going to say? If you have not received that your sins have been forgiven you and that you have peace with God and God has not given your sin, then you are you have totally missed what we're doing. For yes. 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 so now, instead of coming here, we're starting to convince you that your sins were forgiven. I have to move on into perfection. I got to teach you how. How to use the word by faith so you can mature and develop a successful life. Yeah. Well, yeah. boy, I feel like I'm preaching good here. So he, he said in verse 12, he said that you be not slothful, but be followers of them who through pay, faith and patience inherit the promises. Now keep walking with me here. After he had said all that stuff, he said, we're going to move on if God will let us. Then he took a few verses to teach them about people who won't believe. He said, don't worry about that. God knows you taught them. He said, now what I want you to do is follow us, that you be not struck for. Here's my teaching. But be followers of those who do faith and patience and carry the promises. What is he telling you, gentlemen? Love? How, is, this, is this good? What is he telling you? He is saying, instead of following doctrine, for those people, the word means, I, 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 like I said, I'm not smart like you. I looked up the word followers. It means imitators. All right. All right. So he, he was telling me, friend, it really blessed me. It's happening with everything I'm going through. He said, Charles, your focus should be on imitating those people who through faith and patience have already inherited the promises. Your focus should be on imitating the people that's already in the Bible and those you know living who have gotten the promise, enjoyed the process, and have a testimony. Right. Amen. 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 My God, that's me here this morning. Anybody hear me just say amen. amen? Your focus should be glory to God, not the next great revelation. That makes the preacher look like he's smart. But your focus should be finding the people whom you know living or whom God has written who received the promise from God, who endured the process of God, and now they have a testimony. And then it says, for when God made a promise to Abraham, why did he use Abraham? Because Abraham is our model. Abraham is our father. But there are some other people you can follow. You can follow Noah, who got a promise, endured the process, inherited the promise. You can follow Jesus, who got a promise, endured the process, Got the testimony. You can follow Moses. Enjoy the promise. Got a promise. Enjoy the process. Got a testimony. You can follow David. Got a promise. Enjoy the process. Got a testimony. But he gave us Abraham. Yes. Amen. He says, Abraham and you, to all the nations of the world be blessed. I'm going to use you to show them how I'm going to respond to them. You're going to be the author. What shall we say then to Abraham? Our fathers pertain to the flesh and found. Abraham believed God. Yes. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Get in love. I want to get my heart out of the ocean to you this morning. The ocean. I told Pastor Pendy yesterday, I know some people coming to hear a Mother's Day message. But I look through the Bible and I can't find them. Yeah. I told my wife yesterday, the Bible don't say much about mothers if you really look at it. Yeah, yeah, all it only, only says about mothers is mothers giving birth. And then you go to Proverbs chapter 31, it talks about the virtuous woman. But you can't connect that to what you're dealing with right now. Somebody say amen. amen. Your husband, you're going to work. You're in a home where you can take care of nothing but your husband. Say amen. amen. That eliminates you right there from the virtuous woman. Say amen. amen. <laughs> you're not at home putting no silk and stuff together. You got to get up and go to work. Stop giving it eat. I don't want to give you that kind of stuff. I don't want to give you stuff you're shot about that can't help you. 